What is up, hotties? Welcome back to another episode of Stay Hot. I'm Bladen Kirk, joined as always by my two favorite co-hosts of all time, Matthew Spawnauer and Theo Ash, here to recap week 11 of the NFL season, filled with Anthony Richardson's return to the starting lineup, filled with teams figuring out uh, the commanders, filled with the Steelers, continuing to march through every team they play. The Chiefs got their first loss of the season. The Bengals lose another game in terrible fashion. We're going to talk about it all today, but before we get into it, Matt, Theo, how are you guys doing on this beautiful Sunday night? It's a good football day. This is a good what? day for the NFL, uh, but more important than all of that, Theo Ash. Uh, you said that you watched my favorite movie, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, and you said it was good. What did you really think? I thought it was good. I, th- I laughed. I cried. It, it packs a punch. It certainly does. It's uh, emotional. It's it's a good film. I thought it was really well done. I, I thought Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet were great. Goated. I can't remember the director's name off the top of my head. Oh, I don't. Either. But that guy is an insane person. That guy can can write. He did uh, Syndicate New York. He did, and I've seen that one as well. And I had no idea what was going on in that movie, to be completely honest with you, until the end. And then, like, why am I crying? Like, I didn't understand oh. any of it until. And then all of a sudden, he's like pouring his out at the end. I'm like, I'm. I've got tears rolling down my face. Like, how did he do it? I was confused for half the movie. This one is a lot tighter than that one, I think. Like, I, it's a lot oh, more yeah. clear what is going on, and it's still, you know, is, is super emotional. I think the way that it's structured of, you know, not to give any spoilers, but Joel kind of being sad at the beginning and, like, getting kind of happier and happier as the end gets nearer or re- remembering more and more good things, like... Uh, it just it just builds you up in the most brutal way for it to get um, kind of shut down. Now you think the movie has a happy ending? Yes. Versus, I'm, I I don't know if I quite agree with that because they, I feel like nothing really gets learned, and that's kind of the tragic irony of it. But I don't want to say too much that like totally spoils the movie. But you well, can read I've the synopsis. This movie's been out, man. <laughs> you can read the synopsis and pro- probably yeah, But just get because it's set. been out a long time doesn't mean that everybody's seen it. That I just watch watched it. it. This know. is a movie. Yeah, I guess that's that fair. I guess that's fair. I've always felt that way. So I've I've want to talk about it just like for a minute. So if you want to watch it, fast forward like maybe two minutes. I think that it does have a happy ending. Not because like the relationship's going to work out, but because they decide that it's worth it, even though it doesn't. And I think that's a positive way to look at it. That's my take on it. There was a ending originally where they had them like repeating the same cycle over and over and over. And they were like super old or whatever. And they took that out. And if they hadn't, then I'd be like, maybe that's a little sad. But I, but think I like it's to think it's implied that that's what happens. Like, but and that I disagree with because I also think it doesn't really make any sense because they would have to erase their mind the second time, knowing that it didn't stop them from getting back True. together the first. True. So I don't think they could have done it like knowing, like intentionally. But I just don't. I don't think there they is the detail on the last shot, and this is a real ass spoiler right here. But on the last shot. They repeat them running through the snow three times, and I think that might be a little bit of a nod to like, oh, Could be. but it, it is tough to say. I see what you're saying because they did get the disc in the in, in the mail, and they listened. Yeah, to so it, like so the, the difference is they both know. Out. They both know it might not make the relationship work out, but I don't think it's gonna so not work out that they're like, I'm gonna do this again, even though I know it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. In, it, it, it is kind of neutral in that way where I, I can see both readings, but I don't My take on the movie is they just kind of lost the second they agreed to do the procedure and like, there's just kind of no way. And the whole movie yeah. is like, it's, it's better to kind of have love than exactly. lost yeah. and, and to take your, you know, memories with you than it is to like, forget everything. So, but it, it was really good. I, I really enjoyed it. Everybody's got to learn sometime, you know, um, it's, it, it was it was good stuff. I, I like that director. I've got to watch 
whatever it is, New York. I keep forgetting the name again because that, that one confused me way more. I Eternal agree. Sunshine when I first is watched worth that one, a watch. Is worth yeah. a rewatch too because there's a lot of stuff. But I'm like, okay, I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that I got it. That other one, I have no idea. But I need to rewatch Eternal Sunshine because the first time I watched it was, I think. Matt, we were like coming home from the bar or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, you know me, I man. Th- I th- and, and, and it was like we started out. We spent like an hour listening to sad Radiohead songs. Uh, I, I got then, a, I got a text, not to derail what you're saying, but in the same vein, no. I got a text from Sophia last night of you playing um, motion picture soundtrack at Skippers. <laughs> Yeah, in, in, in Oxford, just absolutely murdered the vibe. I watched um the movie once this weekend as well, and I don't know if either of you guys have seen that. I would highly, highly recommend it, especially to Matt, because it, it's more up his alley because it doesn't have droids and Jedi's and things like that blatant. <laughs> but once <laughs> is very good about the the two singer songwriters who like kind of work together and make a little album and it's it's very sweet oh i'd i'd watch it i know you would play <laughs> you would you would rock with it too i'm just getting in a dig at your, uh, yeah, your no. tom and jerry ass list okay. favorite <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll add it, I'll add it to the watch list i would highly recommend it okay. i think i think you would both love it yeah, but, um, but yeah, I played motion picture soundtrack at the bar and just killed. See, it. it's I, I would say that's my type of move. I do love hopping on the touch tunes and putting on the Radiohead, but I, I, motion picture soundtrack is a bridge too far <laughs> even for me. There's some Radiohead songs if you're at the right place, are totally fine. Yeah, motion picture said I soundtrack played, is like, now no one surprises of them. or uh, Karma Police, something a little bit. It's more. maybe the worst Radiohead song you could possibly pick <laughs> to do that with. <laughs> It's because it's so it's just so sad, man. Like there's it's there's no beat like there is no sense of like upbeat uplifting vibe to this song. It's just straight like straight. But that's sad. what that's what I that's what I love about touch tunes is that it doesn't restrict that. It's like if somebody wants to <laughs> go doesn't. ahead. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Unless somebody else is do doing it and it's not funny to me, then I hate it. But <laughs> it's different for radio. Yeah, so I, I, I got... played motion picture soundtrack and then I played uh. I played some Chapel Roan, some Olivia Rodrigo, and then I played... Okay, you won everybody's hearts back. You did. And then I played Present Tense, so I lost them again. You guys want to get into some football? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Do we want to begin with the Thursday game? Because it's just... Yeah, we can go in chronological. Start with uh, Eagles Commanders, and it feels like... Did we talk about Commander Steelers? We did. Mm. Did we? I, we did. I like don't remember it. Um, oh, that's right, because we did talk about like they contained Jaden Daniels and he had zero scrambles. Um, yes. And this was, I mean, Jaden Daniels didn't like have zero scrambles, but it feels like teams are starting to key in. At least the past two weeks, they're starting to key in on the Jaden Daniels moving with his legs, and when you can shut that down. Everything else just kind of crumbles. It feels like I think the I think the ribs are a part of it as well. Potentially, mm. that's still harboring. Yeah, Jaden Daniels. I think he had five rushing yards on three attempts versus the Steelers, and then he had like eighteen on ten uh, against the Eagles. So yeah, he hasn't been running successfully nearly as much. I also think that Jaden Daniels' accuracy has kind of slipped recently. Uh, like his completion percentage fell like 20 percentage points from um, September to October, I know. And I don't know exactly what he's at in November off the top of my head, but there's no way that it can be better than it was in September. It seems to continue to go down. He had that bizarre miss. It's a Noah Brown on that crossing route that like landed at the guy's feet. Uh, and, and a couple more, he was just a bit low on. I thought the pick for Blankenship was, first of all, a great read from Blankenship, but also yeah. a bit underthrown from Daniels. He didn't really hit too much down the field that I can remember. Like that, you know, huge deep ball has kind of been gone for a while and his success rate and his completion rate on those throws is actually lower than you might expect uh considering how heralded his deep ball accuracy has been and 
when he's on the money, he's on the money. But in general, like 20 plus air yards, he's outside of the top 10 in, in success rate there. So when he does connect, it's a huge play. But I feel like since September, it hasn't been quite to the level that it's been at. And I, I think that has a lot to do with the rib injury. I really do. I think when you're trying to put a bunch of power into some of these throws, you're trying to dissect zone a little bit and you got to really zip it between two people. I, I feel like if you have a rib injury and you are trying to whip that thing, you're, you're just kind of wincing. And I, I just thought a couple of his balls and, and the fact that it, he's not scrambling nearly as much kind of signaled to me like maybe there's something about that rib that's hurting when he carries it and when he really tries to put some mustard on it because everything was underneath uh, in, in that yeah. Eagles game. I think it's a good take. Uh, he's sitting just below 60% completion percentage um, mm. since coming back from the Carolina game. Mm. Uh, I think part of it as well is probably he was kind of on an unsustainable completion percentage pace to start the year. I mean, it literally would have had him as the best of all time. Um, True. But I, th I think this is more than just uh, regressing to the mean, even if I do think that's honestly a big part of it and realistically if Jaden Daniels early calling card had not been his insane completion percentage I wouldn't like be that concerned with a six game stretch where you're sitting at 59 percent completion percentage I feel like that's something that happens to probably every single quarterback in the league at some point no yeah and then as far as the Eagles go it was kind of a mid game from them for the most part and then they just totally exploded in the in the fourth quarter and i feel like that was a bit of the saquon effect like you run you run you run you kind of get nowhere you wear and then down. it breaks through in the fourth quarter like not every game goes like that like coaches kind of describe and i i think that that's you know not always the way that it works but it is the way that it worked in this game and you've seen it before with um backs like Henry and I think I think Saquon is kind of qualified for the Eagles this year as perhaps having that effect. He's been a lot better in second halves than than first halves statistically. Yeah, and it's just a lot for anyone defense to deal with when you look at them, right? I mean, you have to worry about the rushing threat of a great offensive line that has, I mean, one of the best running backs in the NFL with Hurts there. And then now that you've brought back, you know, Brown and Smith, you're stretching anybody incredibly thin there. Um, and if, if you can't just rely on, on your corners to survive outside, you know, because you want to try to get big or whatever, um, you're going to have a really tough time. I don't know. I, I think this Washington defense is still not that great. I don't know where they rank right now. I know that they were really bad to start the year. They kind of put up some performances that took them out of that basement. But to me, I just didn't think they had the guys up front. Mm -hmm. And I'd use a stat. The Eagles average 4.7 yards in the first half and then 5.7 yards in the second half so far oh wait that's not but, the season that's just november i'm sorry i had that from the Jaden daniels thing <laughs> <laughs> to me though it's actually we more talked severe. about this well what, what is it it's 4.2 over the whole season in the first half and then in the second half it's 5.1 which ranks third and like in the second half and 22nd in the first half so there is a big jump for for them in the second half in terms of their rushing yards per carry and that was especially too true in the washington game hertz was didn't have his greatest performance certainly and i think mm -hmm. in general this year he's been a little bit inconsistent like at the beginning of the year, he had some excuses with A.J. Brown being out. But, like, he played a game against the Giants where he was missing some reads. And I was like, uh, it is looking a little bit ugly for Hurts. But then he plays, like, kind of amazing for a stretch. And then in that Washington game, I thought it was kind of the same deal. Can I hit you with a take? Yeah. Sure. Howie Roseman hate has gone too far. He actually kind of nailed this offseason. The Eagles should not be bouncing back like this, all things considered. Team was getting more expensive. You're paying big bucks to everybody. Windows are really short in the NFL. But they've exceeded expectations because they've found guys who are just stars, like the uh, Mitchell pick. 
Mm-hmm. He's great. He's fantastic. Yep. That was a a, a a banger. Zach Bond, I mean, is he going to end up first team All Pro? Cooper DeG, we talked about this some some last year or not last year, last episode. But really, like when you put all that together, the reason why the Eagles are better than people expected is one because they got too low on them when the receivers were out, but two, it's because they found a bunch of guys on defense uh, to make good. Like we were worried about their corners. Hasn't been that big of an issue. We were worried about their linebackers. I thought their linebackers going into the year were going to be disastrously bad. Like one of the worst units on a competitive team in the entire NFL, right? Mm-hmm. Not the case at all. So I, I think I think Roseman makes a lot of like Madden trades. The Dotson stuff, dumb. Like and, and he should be criticized for that. But ultimately, the Eagles are eight and two. And I think he's done a pretty good job. Yeah, this defense since September ended, they allow 19 yards per drive. 19 yards. It's a ridiculous number. That's one first down, right? You can't even get to 20. So it's 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 outlier type stuff, how good they are at keeping a cap on explosive plays in the passing game. Fangio's too high shell is just working beautifully. He's playing quarter, quarter, half, and quarters at a high rate, blitzing at the second lowest rate in the league. And it's totally working right now. The the defense is just an amoeba in the zone coverage. I feel like everybody just is doing their job so well. Um, Mitchell obviously got a lot of shine for limiting Terry McLaurin the way that he did. Like uh, when he was lined up over him, I don't think he allowed anything. But really, he, I... I it's not like it's cover one and he's just locking them up one on one. You know, it's it's just that the help system that everybody has and and the way they're playing their zones and like for example when Quinion is the cloud corner, okay, and he's pressed up on the line of scrimmage, he is giving like the most intense jams you will ever see like in your life. Like he is full two hand press, just yeah. kicking the shit out of him at the line of scrimmage, knowing he has help behind him. When he has to wall somebody off to the outside, he's doing such a great job. Like uh, there had some cover one ish moments where he just like ran McLaurin into the safety on a post route, and he just like can be in that kind of half turn and not lose any speed. Like he's so fluid in the lower body. So I don't mean any disrespect when I say he's just part of this overall system, right? The too high safety per- shell provides a lot of support for everybody, but like f- f- they did such a good job identifying guys for this Fangio defense this this offseason and you know DeGene and and Mitchell just walked into that system waltzed in and just they they fit like a glove so a lot of credit to Howie for for finding those guys and and getting Fangio back on board and completely turning this around it was an embarrassing unit in the playoffs they could not tackle now yeah they they just play that too high shell and there are zombies moving forward and they just clean up anything that gets caught underneath and they allow less than 7% of throws against them to be big plays, 16 plus yard plays that that's the lowest mark in the league. They're the only team below 7%. They're outlier type good at that. So the Eagles defense, like the offense is doing its thing. Malata being back helped hurts. You know, he's, he's capable of big performances. He, he continues to improve in certain areas every year. Uh, the blitz was a massive problem last year. This year, just not. He just, things you think are problems with him, they just seem to kind of disappear from year to year. So I, I think the Eagles are the top contenders to the Lions right now in the NFC. I think that if they played, I like, I don't know who would win, to be perfectly honest with you. Like the Lions are obviously on an absolute heater right now. I think they're the team to beat. But I, I think that would be a good ass game in the playoffs. Yeah, I don't disagree. We'll probably see each other. The way the rest of the NFC looks. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. But the Packers won today, guys. They're seven and three, guys. They did won. They did we win. Will... And they, they... they used up all of Kansas City and Patrick Mahomes' devil magic. I I I, I like that take. They do have devil magic a little bit. It's they not as intense the as the Steelers. It's it's just against. The, I saw that ten and zero. I guess now eleven and eleven and zero. Floor against Chicago. That's ridiculous. <laughs> but Chicago is also cursed. 
That's the truth. We we can't talk about Steelers devil magic and then not believe that teams are cursed. I don't Clearly believe Chicago in devil magic is. either. They're, they're just discipline. People no, think it's, it's true. It's just discipline is is what it is. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean you don't believe <laughs> in the devil magic, dude? It's just discipline, really. Discipline, defense, and like run and special teams and crowd noise. Like it's that's spells the Steelers and potions. That's the Steelers devil <laughs> magic. Every, the terrible towels at every away game. Is have Steelers some sort of magic. enchantment on them. <laughs> it's just loud. It's just decibels. And then the fact that they have T.J. Watt is double magic and Minka Fitzpatrick and um, Cameron Hayward is double magic and George Pickens having the greatest hands ever is double magic. They're, now yeah, we're just talking about the Steelers. No, George Pickens having the greatest hands ever might be devil magic. He ca- yep. I have never seen someone just like catch everything, man. He catches everything. We're 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 skipping Bears Packers and we're just moving right <laughs> on to Steelers Ravens here, which I'm fine That's with. Because it happened we'll, we'll during the back. same window. So yeah, it, it did. We'll come back to the we'll come back to the Packers and Bears. Cool. Okay. I, dude, I can't deal. I can't deal with the Steelers. Being <laughs> I love it. The number one team in the AFC North, and and pushing to be the number one team in the AFC after Kansas City loses to Bryce Young next week. Um, it's just it it's just impossible to deal with. <laughs> this team is just for some reason they get everything right all the time. It's like the defense continues to be elite year after year and after last week they stopped, you know, they they didn't just stop Jaden Daniels and the Commanders. They like unlocked the secret. <laughs> They're like, "Yeah, actually if you just like don't let Jaden Daniels run at all, you win." Um, and then they play Lamar Jackson and and the you know the MVP and the offensive player of the year front runner and they they contain those guys right so it's just <laughs> and I'm like oh well they won't be able to do it against those guys and then they do it right yeah it was a great performance from the defense as per usual they just again they're just disciplined I, f- I feel like that's the whole devil magic and especially when it comes to containing these quarterbacks like daniels and jackson the two mm-hmm. you know highest rushing total quarterbacks in the league right now you just can't overrun them you've just got to trust that they'll come to you and just kind of fan out and be athletic and they've got the guys to do that i mean there is a play in this game that was the exact same pass rush path to one that the Bengals used the week before. And it was the one where Lamar escaped around the outside, like mm. snaked back in yeah. Yeah, Tyler Linderbaum through a block. Uh, Lamar got down to the one yard line. Both those were TE stunts on both sides. The tackles ended up setting the edge and then you get a rusher stunting over a guard. Exact same strategy this week. Same same exact pass rush path. And, and the week before, Trey Hendrickson came free up the A or B gap. This week, Nick Herbig came up free up the A or B gap. The difference is with the Bengals front four, Lamar feels like he can just escape and go around the outside and, and beat everybody. This week, he doesn't feel like he can do that to Ogan Joby. So he steps instead of, he, like again, exact same look. But he did not try to escape. He stayed in the pocket. He threw a contested pass with Herbig bearing bearing down, and it was one that bounced off the turf um, right in front of Justice Hill. It looked like maybe Justice Hill caught it and turned up field, but then upon like a little replay, it, you saw that he scooped it up off the ground. And I, I think that's the thing with the Steelers. They just have such an athletic, good front four that is capable of wrecking havoc and, and containing scrambling quarterbacks. I looked it up because Lamar always struggles against the Steelers. I think he has yeah. five touchdowns against them and 11 turnovers in his career sure. against the Steelers. All right. And something that feels significant, the Steelers force him to throw from the pocket like more than any other team. Um, the Chiefs also do a good job with this over the years. So, And I, I think if you can do that, you do sap the Lamar superpower a little bit when you can contain him and... This week, they were the first team all year to force a negative EPA from Lamar when he held it for more than three seconds. Um, Mm -hmm. So it's, again, just discipline, right? He's holding the ball. People are contained. They're they're good in their zone coverages on the back end, and it just gives this Ravens team a lot of trouble. One of the things that I I find interesting, we talked about what made 
the addition of Derrick Henry so dangerous is that now you're kind of forced to add bodies into the box. Most defenses are, unless you have the guys up front, Theo, like you talk about, the athleticism, the strength to win with just four or to win with just five. And the Steelers can do that. So they don't have to like change up their looks, it feels like, to accommodate to a Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson, one-two punch rushing attack. They can just do what they normally do because their defensive line is so good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a lot of it. Um, not to change the subject here, but I do have to bring it up, I think. Tucker. Two-point loss, two missed field goals from Tucker. Not the first game. I mean, the Ravens would maybe be like 9-2 and two or like 10-1 and one right now if Tucker could just hit all of his field goals. It's like a legitimate problem for them. I don't know where he stands in terms of field goal percentage. I guess I could try to look that up here. Um, look at the, the scoring leaders in the 32 team. <laughs> but um, in the bad kicker 32 team league i got but you it's, i got you it's uh they're 26th in field goal percentage right now yikes you know who's 30 bad man 32nd is ahead. the bengals we'll get to them oh, we will <laughs> yeah. it's it's really tough for them dude and i mean I don't know if I even have a take on it. Like, I, I guess you have to get rid of Tucker. Uh, obviously, he has more leeway than, like, any other kicker maybe in the history of the sport. And you're not going to do anything about it midseason, right? But it is an interesting storyline to watch because I know he's getting older, but I, I don't know what specifically would cause him after being so consistent for so long to all of a sudden just be inaccurate you know it, uh, I mean there's varies. plenty of kickers who have played good ball past 34 years old and yeah. there's no reason why Tucker shouldn't be one of them um, I, I know a lot of it's mental honestly for kickers I mean there's so many guys where they'll have a great career and then they'll just miss a couple of tough ones and it's it's really difficult to overcome that I remember Blair Walsh I feel like Blair Walsh was was good for a while and then mm-hmm. he missed that kick in the playoffs against Seattle and he kicked like 10 more kicks the next year and it was it and he was done um but Tucker has just been doing it forever it was funny a couple of years ago when I used to clown on him and he'd like miss a 60 yarder that got blocked and now it's not funny anymore man like he's really just mixing kicks like he just might be done so I I think it's I think it's definitely one of the weirder storylines of the entire NFL season yeah, I mean, you, you mentioned guys that play for a long time. Adam Vinatieri was great for a long time. Phil Dawson was great for a long time. It, it Matt really Prater's is, still doing it down in Arizona. Matt Prater's yeah. still doing it, man. It, it really is crazy, the fall off. It, but I can't think of a moment where, like, Tucker missed, like, a truly awful kick that, like, would have changed his career the same way that, like, the Walsh kick did. Dude, yes. even I, yeah, that's that's not a bad point. I think it's just kind of built on itself. I mean, how about this for a stat? Since the beginning of 2023, so going back to last year, the Ravens are dead last in field goal percentage over 50 yards, 32 out of 32. Yeah, he's been really struggling with with longer stuff too. I mean, and it's it's bizarre because it wasn't that long ago he kicked the game winner for 66 yards against the Lions. Yeah, And now, I mean, I don't know if it's still true that the league is having a very good year from 50 plus like it was in the first couple of seasons uh, or in the first couple of games. Today may have put a dent in it. (laughs) Yeah, but But I know Tucker is like among the he's having the hardest time. His 50 plus is like insanely bad. It's like one or two from for like 15 over his last 50. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but it's bad. I I almost wonder if after hitting that game winner it just became such a an expectation that like it's a gimme from like anywhere on the field for tucker and so it's like crept into his head it's like if i miss one all of a sudden is like is it a gimme like i don't know I, I don't like, know. I feel like social media definitely makes it tougher. If you see that stuff about like that would drive me crazy. I, there's only so much we can speculate about about why Justin Tucker is missing and is like I have no idea. Like we have no idea. Um, but it's interesting and it's costing them games. 
Yeah. Maybe he just kicked more than other players. I'm, I'm trying to think. Since 2010, he's kicked 411 field goals. Matt Prater has kicked 351. Damn. Like that's maybe, but it feels like they practice and practice and practice. Like if you take into account non-game reps, how far apart could those two guys be? Yeah, I guess. I guess I don't know. <laughs> I don't know point. either. And if it, if that was a problem, I feel like it would be one of those things where it got worse as the season went on, you know. But it's been a problem since the start of the year. Hmm. It's tough to know, but it's 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 just a weird development because I mean. Even at the start of this year, the narrative around him was still that like, oh, he's per- like he it, you just get on on the opposing team side at all. And you've got three points for sure. Now, I don't even know if that was true coming into the season. In fact, I I was confident that it, it wasn't. I won't lie. But um, it's it's tough now. I almost wonder if he's like been secretly nursing an injury or if like he has some special cleats that he has to wear or like not his maybe fault his thing holders just Tucker. sucks <laughs> <laughs> that's a possibility holders. too who's the holder <laughs> Have they changed throwing holders? the throwing the ravens holder under the tucker bus it's sick stuff <laughs> man <laughs> but I, I don't know i don't want to i don't want to harp on it too much yeah that's fair do we want to talk about packers when bears now I have more to say about that. There's an article that says Justin Tucker explains two missed field goals in Ravens lost to Pittsburgh that I want to see, but it's behind a paywall. So I guess we'll never know the true reason. Okay. We'll yeah. never know. What are you going to do? Shout out George Pickens, I guess, is my last thing about this game. The only good offense that yeah. the Steelers had was targeting him. Um, and. He's been a beast all year. I feel like that's been the case for them for a while. Like, nothing else is really that effective. Um, catches everything, man. But he just catches everything, and it's pretty crazy. Yeah, if I were them, I'd Stafford him and give him, like, 200 targets. <laughs> that wouldn't even be a question. That's Why not, do anything that's else? not a bad play. You know, there's just something magical about being at a live event, whether it's the energy of a packed stadium, the thrill of a concert, or the laughter at a comedy show. There's truly nothing like it. I remember catching a game last year, one of those last minute decisions where everything just fell into place. The roar of the crowd, the buzz in the air. It's an experience you just can't replicate anywhere else. And I'm really looking forward to making even more memories this year. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about games time. The app that's been a game changer for me. They've had this new feature called Game Time Picks and trust me, it's a lifesaver. It takes all the hassle out of finding tickets by showing you the best deals on the best seats. So no more endless scrolling or second guessing. Just the other day, I was looking for tickets to an upcoming concert, one I've been dying to see, and I decided to check out Game Time Picks and let me tell you the deals they had were unreal. I found a super deal that was just too good to pass up and within minutes i had my seats locked in the app even let me preview the view from my seats before i bought them so i knew exactly what to expect but what really impressed me was with how easy the whole process was the app is super intuitive and with features like all in pricing there were no surprise fees at checkout what you see is what you get plus with their lowest price guarantee i knew i was getting the best possible deal and if anything happened like the event got canceled they got you covered with their flexible customer service policy. So if you're anything like me and you'll want to take the guesswork out of buying tickets, you've got to check out Game Time. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code BladingK for $20 off your first purchase. That's of course B L A I D E N K for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hey everyone, with the holidays creeping up faster than your aunt's fruitcake recipe, I've got something way better to share with you. If you want to look sharp for all those festive gatherings, and maybe finally win that best groomed at the family dinner award, check out the latest masterpiece from Manscaped, the chairman. Pro electric foil shaver. Trust me, it's like Rudolph for your face, guiding you to a smooth, irritation-free shave. Let's dive into the goods. The chairman pro is armed with not one 
but two interchangeable skin safe blade heads. The skin safe four blade foil gives you that baby's bottom smooth shave, while the skin safe stubble trimmer is perfect for keeping some stubble without the irritation. So no more looking like you lost a fight with a Christmas tree, just sharp, smooth skin. But wait, there's more. The Chairman Pro has flex adjust technology which makes it feel like it was designed just for you. The blades and pivoting head adjust to every curve of your face, even those tricky jawline and neck areas. No more awkward patches or missed spots, just a shave that's as smooth as Santa's sleigh ride. Plus, it's waterproof so you can shave in the shower without any hassle. Just rinse it and clean afterward and you're good to go. Get the Chairman Pro today and experience a shave that is as smooth as you deserve. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code stayhot at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code stayhot at manscaped.com. But yeah, let's talk about Packers and Bears. Caleb Williams led a comeback. A couple quarterbacks led. A couple young quarterbacks led comebacks today. Or not comebacks, but game-winning drives. And um, Caleb Williams got sold by his kicker. Right, Not even by his kicker, just by his special teams unit. Not able to hit the game-winning field goal. Theo, is it devil magic or is it discipline? Uh, well, from the special teams, apparently it's it was film study because they noticed that Santos kicked with a really low trajectory, and apparently Bisaccia said it'll be a disappointment if we don't block one today before the game, is wow. what Lafleur said. Wow, so he, that's tough. He called his shot, I guess. But um, you saw it on the first kick. It was about 50 or something yards, and it, it was like 52, I think. And it didn't hit the net like it went in, but it bounced off the ground. So I was like, okay, Santos doesn't have the biggest leg. So lining up for the final kick, I kind of felt like knowing that, I, I felt a little bit better. I'm like, okay, they don't have prime Justin Tucker back there. And sure enough, it was just kind of a low trajectory, maybe to increase the accuracy or increase the power. Obviously, there's something that goes into it. But um, yeah, nice shout out Carl Brooks saving the day. I mean, I was so pissed that entire game, really, to be honest with you. I was just not having a good time at all. I was debating turning on the Jets Colts game the entire time, and then we won at the end. You should have. So I was man. like, "Oh, was cool, <laughs> we won." <laughs> but I'm getting happier and happier about that. Over the, I'm like, eh, seven and three is not too bad, even though the team might it's be pretty kind great, of man. Fatally flawed in the in the pass rush department. I mean, Bears fans should be glad as well. I do think that, I do think that Caleb Williams is kind of on the. Trevor Lawrence development track and this is the Urban Meyer year that will eventually get better I thought the play calling was far superior in this game than it was the oh, previous yeah. two um, I did not watch Keenan Allen trying to run away from coverage on big over balls <laughs> the entire game he just got like quick little outbreakers and like that worked a lot better for him and Caleb Williams he got to use his legs a lot more and he's he's really fast and got that low center yeah. of gravity so he that really benefited him the screen game was was killer in yes. this game after being sucky the first few weeks like it all kind of ran smoothly what do you guys think of caleb's performance i thought it was pretty good to start i was like it's nice it's moving the ball but this is not first overall pick ball right now uh, mm -hmm. because it was so quick game focused uh, but as the game went on I felt like he became a little bit more active and then on that final drive I mean third and 19 he's got a bail from the pocket rolls out arm angle makes the play shet, sets up a, a fourth and short he picks it up and then pressure in his face later on that drive and he hits a nice throw outside like I, I thought that was good stuff from him um and it's why you drafted him. But I definitely feel like the game plan for all of the receivers and for Caleb himself was clearly more tailored to what they're good at. Like you said, Allen's getting the outbreakers. Okay, who were they throwing a bunch of screens to? DJ Moore was getting some screens. It's like, yes, just get the ball in his hands. You, you almost forget how screens good he with is. Blockers out in front of him. A key. Yes. <laughs> they, they were throwing him some screens. I felt like they would throw him a lot of screens with like nobody blocking for him before. Which is which is just terrible because you need, you need <laughs> you guys do. to get blocked so you can run you for do. yardage. You do. Um, they didn't want to and then, I mean... Superman, what is it? Beast mode. Right, and they gave they gave a Dunze 
you know, some shots down the field. He had a fantastic catch today. And maybe most importantly, the read option stuff with Caleb was fantastic, man. I mean, and there were several plays in this game where a straight up run, you know, doesn't cut it. And it's got to be Caleb keeping it and making it happen. Uh, so all of that came together. It wasn't like the greatest offensive performance ever. Like they still only put up 19 points, but you can definitely see what they're building more with with this game plan definitely and i I thought Komet had a great game as well like they kind of got to the perimeter a few times obviously there was that big play where evan williams got absolutely smashed by um ah, number 70 coming around the the corner why can't i remember his name but it'll come to me but like on that play Komet just absolutely stuffed our defensive end in a locker pinning down on that he did that a couple times it felt like had some good chemistry with Caleb throughout the whole game Caleb hit him on a big play behind the defense at one point yeah every DeAndre Swift obviously made a huge move in the open field there the Bears look scary I mean I I really thought they were going to win that game um the whole time I was like our defense can't really stop what they got going on and it does feel like they can even build off that and, and be more scary going into the future with a, a different coaching staff. I, it was definitely a big step in the right direction. Can I give a take on that final drive? Yeah, sure. It was incredibly weak, incredibly soft to yep. take the football yep. out of Caleb Williams' hands. Two-yard run to Roshan Johnson, let 30 seconds run off the clock, timeout, 46 yard field goal this is actually this is a this is a great point to bring it all together the packers were aware that the bears kicker had a problem with low kicks Mm -hmm. you kick it low to get more power for sure that's why like long kicks are blocked more often yeah because you've got to get it like you've got to really hammer it you know the bears know that's a problem or, or the Packers know that's a problem. Were the Bears aware that that was a problem? Because to say 46 yarder or 50 yard, like that's it, we're done. You have 30 seconds in a timeout, and to just yes. run the ball yes. and say, well, we're going to center it and get two yards, and that's it. When I mean, how yeah. long did it take them to drive down there? Like, like no time at all. You're not going to attempt something quick outside because that's what kills me is that if they wanted to run the ball once, get two yards, and then kick it, they could have thrown it two times. At least on some safe stuff. And still done that. And still yeah. done the exact same thing. Absolutely terrible, terrible end of game management. And I don't know if that's specifically exactly what ended up costing them, but it certainly didn't make it any easier. It's a total Ryan Day move. <laughs> it was. It's exactly what it did against Georgia. <laughs> but the Georgia Ryan one was Day. even worse because it was even farther. Yes. I'm not saying you're wrong. I do want to point, I want to say something earlier you said it wasn't the greatest offensive performance matt they only scored 19 points that's true but they only had one two three four five six seven drives so that's fair they they didn't that's they, fair it was it was it they was only good. punted they only punted twice um and then they missed that field goal at the end when they should have yes, walked yes. it on held on to the ball the whole game as far i'm sorry the packers defense though is a disaster. Uh, the the pass rush situation, it cannot mm-hmm. be overstated how much it it takes us out of it. I saw the pass rush win rate charts that Seth Walder posts every once in a while. Gary is the bottom left hand corner of it. He beat a tackle for a sack for the first time all year today, and it happened in the fourth quarter on that final drive. It was promptly erased by one of our defensive <laughs> linemen getting juked by caleb ducking under a a, like a sure tackle and then hitting you know the plays to a dunze down the field so the one the one good play that our defensive line made all day was just immediately erased by like a blatant missed tackle on caleb in the pocket i i think he was i mean the lack of pressure the entire day was appalling this then when they played week 18 last year kenny clark wrecked the game this year like just nowhere to be seen he's in the same place as gary on these win rate charts bottom left hand corner worst worst win rate and pressure rate and everything of his entire career just just terrible guys are running open without jair it was 
it was bad. Evan Williams had the worst game of his career, I'd say. Quay Walker just running around out there doing nothing. Like they're running the read option and guys are just like flying to the running back and like no one knows Caleb has the ball. Just embarrassing stuff from mm-hmm. from the defense all day. Like mm-hmm. it, it shouldn't have been as tough to stop as it was. And and when the Chicago got the ball with a chance to go win the game. Like I just felt like I knew they were going to get a shot at the game winner here. And there was just no chance the defense would get off the field in a good situation. And it really took the bears gift wrapping this one to the, to the defense to, to, to get a win here. So I just don't think there's any way that this team rolls into the playoffs and wins the super bowl with just no first team no all pro rush. cap. Yeah. With, with yeah. no pass rush, and just with no no one you'd consider like a future Hall of Famer, a first team all pro type of guy, like maybe McKinney rises to that level, but you know, he missed a big tackle today and teams just yeah. probably aren't throwing towards him as much. Like he's he's probably not that good. You need a guy like that. You need a Chris Jones, you need a Bosa, you need a I don't know. I mean, think of all the great you had players. The, that guy in Gary, and it, and it, I think we talked about this at the beginning of the season. Like, how much of the blame goes on the defensive coordinator? Halfly, I, I kind of I made the joke today. Like the the players are ruining the coaching staff's talent. Like I I, I honestly don't blame <laughs> Halfly. Okay. Too much for it. I I thought some of his blitzes today were kind of weak. Like some of the zero stuff from depth. But it's just taking a while to get there. But it's like you can't rush with four. There's there's just not a lot of yeah. winning if you're a defensive coordinator in that situation. The defense is actually a little bit better overall than it was last year, despite the fact that our pass rush has completely evaporated. Maybe it's Halfley's fault that it's completely evaporated, but like I don't think so, man. Eventually, it's just not Gary to beat a tackle, and he just can't yeah. do it this season. So it sh- it really shouldn't be that pass hard. Pass rush at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's tried to do some yeah. creative things with Gary, and and it, it just, I don't know. There's only so much. Hey, shout out, um, yeah. Shout out Christian Watson, by the way, dude. Showing off some of the ball skills. I've got a crazy Different. stat for you. Okay, I'm all ears. You're all ears. Okay, let me get to it. Real it was just. Quick. It was just. I mean, he he probably single handedly won the game for the Packers. He, one hundred percent phenomenal. I couldn't believe the first. I mean, he had he had two. He had one really amazing. The rack one also twenty two on Elijah Hicks. <laughs> Tough game. A hey, Brisker has been out. I mean, he might have to retire. Man, he's had a concussion. He's been out for months. Like, damn, yeah, yeah. But here is my stat. Okay, so. Christian Watson had 150 yards today. That is good for ninth best in a game this season. Mm -hmm. Here are the target numbers for the top 10 yardage games so far this year. 17, 12, 13, 12, 11, 11, 13, 15, 4, 13. (laughs) That's awesome. He's Four he's he's target. kind of turning into the player that he's he's you know supposed to be. I feel like, um, I mean, you you drafted him to to get explosives, and maybe this game is kind of carrying it a little bit for him. But I mean, it was two really big time plays, man. That that you got to have a pretty well rounded skill set to hit. So another shout out, another thing I got to shout out with the offense. I, I tweeted it before the the game and it's still true jordan love has more interceptions than sacks this year and that is stat is not to be you know written off i feel like the interceptions suck he's thrown 11 this year it's way too high he threw an absolutely brutal one today in the red zone but the sack avoidance from him was very real today and it really does cut into the interceptions like it really is kind of evens out. He's the only quarterback in the league with more picks than sacks. And the picks suck. They really do. But the fact that he's not putting the team behind the sticks with sacks is, it really cannot be overstated. And today, there were some times where I thought for sure they'd get him, and he accelerated, and he made some big-time throws off that as well. 
I, I can't really complain about the offense overall outside of that pick in the red zone. And I don't know how he overthrew six foot five Tucker Craft wide open. Just put it on it. Like, how can you not? Um, just, I guess, loaded his back foot too much is what Tom Brady was saying. But um, I'm pretty happy with the offense at the end of the day. Obviously, extremely happy with Christian Watson's performance. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I, I, if if we're going to win the Super Bowl or if we're going to go deep in the playoffs, beat the Lions, whatever you want to say, whatever constitutes being a successful season for the Packers, the offense is going to have to lock in to the point where they're scoring 30 30 a game, you know, in the playoffs. And I, I do still think that that is in there. Like they, I I think they're still capable of it, but there's been a lot of disappointment. So they're seven and three, but they feel like a a wild card team more than a contender on the tier of the lions and Eagles. Mm -hmm. Well, an offense that did lock in today for really the first time all year is the Indianapolis Colts. Anthony Richardson took took himself out of a game late, got benched for two weeks, came back, and had the best game of his career. He really did, man. And we talk about, oh, it's weak, the Bears, what they did on their potential game-winning drive. Steichen said, I'm going to put the ball in Anthony Richardson's hands, and we're going to get this shit done. And that's exactly what happened. He hit on throws. He was aggressive running the ball. Like, everything that you would want to see from Richardson happened. And I thought that was very exciting, given the recent turn of events with him. I heard good things. I didn't catch this one, so I don't have any comments. But I I saw that he was completing more than, like, nine passes today. So I was... I (laughs) needed 20. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm like, not trying. I guess I'm kind of being a dick, but I mean it. Like, it's a big deal. No, yeah. I mean, is that a. I didn't watch this one either outside of the last um, drive, but is that. And my box score watching, I'm seeing a 71.4% success rate against the Blitz. That's what I was talking about before he came back. Maybe he could break. Dude, he hit one throw where he was literally wrapped up. Like, they were taking him down, and he just, like, whipped it. And I'm like. Flacco isn't doing that. This is why you keep Richardson in. Like, the throws that he can hit, the runs that he can attempt, I mean, he just completely changes the dynamic of this offense. And the fact that he was playing well, it's just, it's totally different. And I I can't guarantee, I mean, obviously this was against the Jets. Their defense has not been playing up to par uh, to the level that it can be. Their defensive line was getting getting home. Um, But for the most part, I mean you still need to see them do this the rest of the season. But I think this is at least optimistic to, to, I think this was the most encouraging win they've had in a long time. Definitely. And to see Richardson play this well, definitely. And in the second half, I'm seeing Nate Tice's tweet about it in his little cut up here, 12 for 18, 169 yards, a passing touchdown, a rushing touchdown, Yep. It, that's just in the second half. So him just settling into the game and, and being able to tear it up. I love to see it. I love to see it. Maybe yeah. maybe the key with some of these rookie quarterbacks or, or young quarterbacks, <laughs> intermittent starting and sitting, like people talk about should they start, should they sit, maybe maybe going like four games bench, four games bench, four games bench, <laughs> like give them a couple extra bye weeks as young players would help lessen the, the mental strain Thanks on some Brian. of them because that's interesting because Bryce Young did he came back from a little bit of a break and looks you know way better than he b- did before and Richardson took a two-week break and came in and was slinging it like maybe that really is there's something to that maybe that really is good Richardson did miss a few passes today it wasn't perfect uh <laughs> fumbled a couple be. of times but he hopped on one of them um Packers. Josh Downs looks great I mean he's always open I feel like Josh Downs is incredible. He, at some point, is going to have, like, a crazy year. He I, is already my fantasy sleeper for next year. And he was my fantasy sleeper this year, too. Like, at some point, you can tell he is going to go off. If somebody wanted to throw him the ball, like if he was playing with Stafford, and Stafford wanted to throw him the ball 15 times a game, he could. Yeah. Richardson wanted to get—I mean, Richardson was 5-for-5 five five when targeting Downs today. So— mm-hmm. 
No reason. And I see why Alec, Alec Pierce had a big game too. Shout out to him. Alec Alec Pierce. He's friend a great of the show. Too. Friend of the show. Friend of the show. Stay on pace for one k. Is he? I didn't yep. see that. Yeah, he's having a real good yeah. year. There we go. That's what we like to see. Yeah, I mean, it's just the first time all year I feel like every aspect of this Colts offense was firing. Um, and that's that's just what you need. The defense still needs a little bit of work, but I thought Latu played a really good game. They have a corner, um, Jalen Jones. That dude's, that dude's nice. And I, I've apparently Colts fans are saying he's been nice all year, and I just haven't noticed it. He, He's but, been a little inconsistent, but he's had some okay. nice games. He's he's been he, up he and down. He was playing really well today. I thought. I just felt like every time that I mean, there was uh, I think they were targeting Garrett Wilson on the sideline, and I had seen him like around the ball a couple of times, but he closed on this pass so well. Um, closed on it with uh, his his left hand. It was would have been on his right side, left hand on the upfield hip. And just came in and swatted with his with his right. It was I was like, dude, that's that's about as textbook as it gets. Um, yeah, so I just, I thought he played really well today. And Colts fans say he's been great all year, but Theo, you're saying he's been inconsistent. So we'll have to we'll have to check the tape this off season and see just how good he really was. Or maybe I guess for now we could check the PFF grade. <laughs> yeah. And if it's like a fifty, then we know he's terrible. But if it's anything else, then we have to check the tape. I would say, I mean, his grade is 64.7, if that means anything to you. It's not special, but it's not horrible. No, it's, <laughs> I mean, he's he's been in, he's been up and down, but okay. like his, he had okay. two picks against the Bears. He had a great game that week. Um, yeah, he's been, he's been okay. He's had some moments. He's had yeah. some moments. How about this for he's had he had a 85 grade against Miami an 80.9 grade against Jacksonville 76.4 against Chicago but then he had a 52.8 against Houston week 1 a 42 against Minnesota 46 against Buffalo so again PFF grade definitely not the yeah. all, end all be all but just goes to show like yeah he's been inconsistent I think but yeah that's fair he's had those good games and the Jets, man, the Jets, again, didn't really it's catch funny. much of they, this one, but... The, it's funny because the Jets started out looking horrible. Like, they kind of started and ended the game the same. But like, they start Like, the first quarter, I was like, dude, this is, like, the worst team ever. Rodgers was missing throws. It was like nothing was, nothing was hitting. And then, you know, towards the end of that last drive, I'm like, they, they couldn't get a stop. Um, I'm like, this looks like the worst team ever. But there was a moment where the quick game really started going for them. And they had, like, Garrett Wilson and Devontae Adams. They were both just absolutely cooking in the intermediate, in the short and intermediate stuff. And they got Brees Hall going. Like, everything was firing in, like, the second and third quarter, it felt like. And then they just disappeared again. And I was like, like, there's clearly an aspect of this team that can be good. But for some reason, it's just never all together. Yeah. Uh, the win percentage, at, this, here's a st tweet from Steve Palazzolo. Win percentage as Jets starting quarterback. Zach Wilson, 36%. <laughs> Sam Darnold, 34%. Aaron Rodgers, 27%. It reminds me of, like the wow. Dream Team Eagles, which... Oh, that's a, a lot great, of our great comp. A lot of our fans probably... This is like just kind of my one of my earlier football memories. The, the yeah, Eagles signed all these free agents... There was supposed to be this super team. Like, everyone was so hyped, and they just fell flat on their face. This Jets team feels like the same thing. Like, this collection of stars, they trade for Devontae Adams in the middle of the year. Like, if you had told me they were going to do that at the beginning of the season, it'd be like, well, who's going to stop this team? Yeah. Rodgers is there, right? Just a complete, one of the bigger letdowns I've seen since then. Yeah, I mean... I, I I don't understand kind of what went wrong <laughs> because the talent looks like it should be there. And like, it's not even that Rogers is playing like all bad football. Like he wasn't hitting in the first quarter, but he finished the game 22 for 29 
and he threw for two touchdowns. He's just not at his standard, and, and Tyron Smith isn't at his standard either. Like, Tyron Smith keeps yeah. getting beat, and that's he was supposed to be your bookend, and Rodgers isn't avoiding pressure yeah. the same way that he was, and just his accuracy just comes and goes, and his chemistry is terrible with everybody, and the defense fired the defensive mind and promoted somebody and who's just not that so good. And it got so worse. I, I really... I, I, I I feel so justified way back when I said Sala was fired prematurely. He just was like he was part of the reason why that defense was good. Like it's completely fallen apart just since then, and the details are completely lost on this team. So yeah, you only no you only get the that. you only get the interim coach boost if your interim coach is better than your head coach, and it was worth it to fire the head coach. You do not get the interim coach boost when. Your defense is good, and you fire the defensive-minded guy. Like <laughs> with Dennis Allen, the defense was shit, yeah. and they fired the defensive guy, right? So then it makes sense to get better. But when your defense is like not the problem, and you fire the defensive it, guy, then you just like, got worse. It would be like if the Bills last year fired. <laughs> um, I'm blanking. McDermott. What's his name? McDermott. If they had fired McDermott, just like it would have been like what? Like everyone would have been so confused because it's like that's clearly not. The issue. Well, that Loki did happen to the Bills last year when they fired <laughs> Dorsey, even though their offense is like and top people, five people were, in most categories. Were, that, but it was like they were they were turning the ball over a lot. So they were like you could understand why they did it. True. And Brady, but, Brady has been sick, so that they are kind of yes. justified in that. Let's talk about the Bills. Yeah, you want to Bills Chiefs. They finally take their first L of the year. Matt, I'm sorry that it couldn't have been against our Lord and Savior, Bryce Young. Bryce Dude. would have smiled them to death. <laughs> there, I was seeing the edits, so I'm like, and it still might be, but I was seeing them liking like Black Hole Sun edits of Bryce Young. I'm like, <laughs> this is going to be the worst <laughs> game of all time, guys. Like, this is the worst jinxing that anything, like, you realize the Panthers are still terrible, right? Bryce hasn't earned black hole sun edits yet. It needs to be like walking on sunshine, just happy to be here type vibe. You Dude, know, not like they're making they're making a, like it's like a gag that they're making an edit of my quarterback. Dude, like we were losing by 30 no matter what. Um, maybe now that the pressure's off, you know, we'll see. Uh, Josh Allen was really crazy this game. He had really some good. nutso plays. Uh and it's it's tough to imagine. I mean, I know Lamar's crazy. This MVP race is really going to be something down the stretch. That was my immediate takeaway. I mean, we've gone what back to back weeks. It feels like where it's probably flipped who is at the top. Like a couple, like after the Browns game, you would have said it's probably Allen, and then after, um, you know, last week you probably would have been like, oh, it might be Lamar again. And now, you know, after the games of today. It might be back to Allen, or it probably is back to Allen. Man, I would still go with Lamar, but <laughs> they are the it, sixth I mean, seed, and the Bills are the you know just knocked off the Chiefs, and like the 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 fourth and two, like you need a play, and he runs it in for a touchdown. That was he is just incredible. Ridiculous. He it, it, it's. There I'm trying to plays. find exact. Yeah, there's a couple of plays. I'm trying to find the words for it, but I mean, just I don't know what more you could want in the quarterback. He's a crazy extender. He's a crazy runner. He's willing to take contact. He really mm -hmm. is willing to take contact to get it done, man. Um, and like that play broke down pretty quick, it felt like, and he still made something out of it. It felt like he had control the entire time. He's incredible. I thought, so that was one where Chris Jones had a two-way go and he went to the inside and then I thought Karloff just kind of went a bit too far on the edge with that. And then I think they wanted Pinnell to contain, like kind of stunting or when, when Jones cut to the inside of the right guard, mm -hmm. Pinnell was supposed to kind of scrape over into that B gap between where Jones and Karloff just was and mm -hmm. Josh Allen versus Pinnell, who was going to get beat to the spot there. It was Pinnell. And I think they were, I, I'm a little bit worried about this Chiefs secondary is kind of where I'll go after that because he got into the open field 
And it was kind of an embarrassing tackling effort from there. Like he just, that's true. He were in through everybody like way too easily. I feel like, and I think a lot of the reason that the chiefs haven't allowed big games is because the offense has done such a good job dominating time of possession. Like they just kind of chip away without explosives. It, doesn't quite feel like this Chiefs defense and this the secondary specifically without Snead and without Watson with with an injury. It does feel like it's kind of vulnerable, and they tried to play some man, and it just isn't really working against the the Bills wide receivers anymore. That was a good answer earlier in the year, but this time around, like Amari Cooper will torch you. He had he had that huge catch. Yeah, mm-hmm. he had two of them. He had one on that third down with the one handed one on the sideline. Mm-hmm. That was a huge play. The one where he tracked it ridiculously on the double move was a huge play. And the the Chiefs were actually the more consistent team. I thought like just picking up chunks on first and second down and and th- things like that. But they didn't have any big like really big plays like the bills did it felt like yeah yeah i I completely agree i mean they almost had that one to to worthy which was a great play but i i can't believe that he didn't stay in bounds there dude my Um, comment section was telling me that mahomes led him out of bounds learn ball everybody like go look at where that ball is placed like that was not led out of bounds like oh my god and so you take a big a big clonking step forward <laughs> yeah and get your your pinky toe out of bounds i don't know what to tell you about that because you're dragging your toe beforehand yeah like i just How i do worry about, about worthy not great i'm not feeling awesome about him i'm not going to lie i don't think it's like over anything i'm not like drawing any huge conclusions but he has been underwhelming for sure you know they want to get him the ball a lot and uh, they they spent high capital on him, and I just wonder like he's very fast, but I wonder if he's got the the skill set around it, especially with the ball in the air. Mm-hmm. I think there's some of those guys where they can be a nuanced route runner and they can be very quick and they can take the top off of the defense. But if you can't, if you're not good when the ball is actually being thrown to you like the catching or the body control or the tracking or the going up to play, you know, mm-hmm. is, is, is tough. You're always going to be a little bit of a headache. And I think worthy, not saying he's guaranteed to never get better, but worthy right now is that type of player. Um, and it's, it's, it's a common archetype. You know, I think as Panthers fan, like Ted Ginn was that type of dude for us for a long time. And he was a good player. He he rounded out to being a good player throughout his career, but um, I feel like Worthy is is definitely maybe right now in that archetype of a frustrating deep threat. Yeah, and I don't want to. You're, you're deflecting blame from Kelsey here. Let's check out his stat line, Matt. <laughs> Isn't he fifty five? Like he's, a or he's a blocking he's, tight end. He's a block. No. Yeah, he's a blocker. He's a blocking now, right? tight end. By the way, this would be like I don't if, see uh, Xavier you were, Worthy you were... getting in line and and blocking a defensive end. Yeah, this no. would be like hating on Mercedes Lewis, man. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> How far he's fallen. Two catches for eight yards. What is that? We're comparing uh, Travis Kelsey to Mercedes uh, Lewis and, and Xavier Worthy to for, Ted Ginn. Uh, he's sitting <laughs> on 507 yards. He's not on pace for a K. It's over. I mean, you do have to you do have to admit, like, the Chiefs should have had it better than this receiver wise. Rasheed Rice was gonna have a crazy year. Yeah, and yeah. Hollywood Brown is much more reliable as a deep threat. And like Worthy should have been like the third receiver there. And mm-hmm. and Kelsey shouldn't need to be who he was three years ago for all of this to work. And it's it's just made things hard to you know, hard hard to improve on from what, what they were last year, you know? It's it's not to say that the Chiefs can't win with what they're doing. They're nine and one, and they can win a Super Bowl. The world where everybody's like, okay, this time the Chiefs won't win the Super Bowl, like I was saying last year, and then they do. Really, yeah. like not that hard to see. But it's a thin line that they're walking. You know, it's a tough path that they've got right now. When you've got Mahomes, and it just feels like you still 
are are you know moving with concrete blocks on your feet it's in hard in game it is hard it's 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 a dink and dunk and dink although for, there is some chiefs hopium worthy he did have a pretty like outside of that not a drop that's true the, what the one the, when he didn't drag his feet he did make a positive impact on this game overall i thought that play where he made a catch on a crosser and he shed his guy on um a pick play running across the field deandre hopkins kind of ran into the guy guarding him but taylor Rapp, the single high safety kind of made a speed turn and made a really good break on the ball so by the time worthy caught it the guy who was chasing him was catching up to him and taylor Rapp was bearing down and he kind of made the catch in between the two of them like that was good the touchdown where they put him in like split zone motion off play action mm -hmm. and force the linebacker to like change directions off the play action and chase him down. Like he, the linebacker had no chance and where they just accelerated around him. So it was a concentrated effort to make him to get him the ball in the first half. And like, he really did pay him off. But again, like the consistent, can he, if, if he's part of the game plan in the first quarter, can he be the, can he part, be part of the game plan in the first, second, third, and fourth quarter as, as kind of a smaller guy, kind of struggles with the physicality? Like, probably not. And you do kind of feel for him because he wasn't supposed to be this important right away. But unfortunately, it just kind of came down to it. But, um, yeah, just I, I still believe in the Chiefs. I still think they're the team to beat in the AFC once the playoffs roll around. Oh, I yeah. still think like they're they're the number one team in the AFC power rankings, honestly, because of the consistency that they've been able to conjure. And this is just one game, I and mean, it was a pretty close game with a lot of lead changes. But um, there are there are some things to really be concerned about. And if you're the Bills, this was a prove it game, and they proved that they're window is still just wide open to win a super Bowl. i mean if field. somebody somebody told you right now buffalo is the favorite in the afc you'd I mean, feel like i mean yeah that's that, fair I, that's it's fair hard to disagree. i mean they just they just beat the chiefs close game but by two scores yeah i know i know like All one i could have flipped and christmas but. 1 p.m Chiefs steelers this good one. this will feed families the discipline bowl <laughs> that will be that will be a devil, devil magical magic bowl. game. Okay, I'm down Talk for about that. Magic the Gathering, man. <laughs> Banger. I was thinking about Magic Banger. the Gathering the other day. It used to be my game, man. But um, really, I didn't know that. Speaking of magic, do you guys want to talk about Bengals versus Chargers? The not Burrow his versus fault Herbert. Off. Six six stuff, dude. Um, I mean, Herbert and and Burrow were both really, really incredible in this game. I regret at the start of the year. I was like, I think Stafford might be better than Burrow. Mm, I don't know. Stafford I don't still know. can hit throws. No, Stafford's it, pretty it's crazy. Tough. Stafford did. Yeah. Stafford. I feel. I feel strongly that Stafford is in that tier. Don't know if I'd say he's better than Burrow right now. It's tough. Um, it's just like. Every once in a while, you see Stafford hit a throw that's like, no, like two other guys can hit that. Right, right. I was just, I was just incredibly impressed with with the Bengals' ability to fight back. I know a lot of it was because the Chargers got light at corner, and then it was just easy pickings for Chase and T and whatever. But um, despite it all, man, Burrow, you talk about escapability. He's another one of those guys who's just ridiculous. Burrow is is so good at moving the pocket. He almost he almost likes to be running forward to throw. Sometimes it feels like man, there's so many. I feel like nobody steps up, runs up more than he does, mm -hmm. um, and it, it makes makes life really really easy for his tackles. Yeah, uh, he has crazy acceleration for a guy. He's just got such an underrated blend of skills to be a runner. Like he's like sturdy. He's six foot four. How much does he weigh? See, he's six. They foot got him four. at two fifteen. Two fifteen. Yeah, six foot four, two fifteen, two sixteen. That's that's pretty good. Like he is not small in any sense and his acceleration is crazy like he is fast and yeah he just he just weaves in and out and he throws such a catchable ball and 
Mm -hmm. It just is like a, it's as a wide receiver. I feel like sometimes it's gotta be like catching a beach ball. Like it just like floats down at you and it just lands like a pillow in your hands. Like I used to be so arm strength pilled with him. Now I'm like he, the way he uses it and with how accurate it is, it's actually like a strength of his. Cause it just like comes down so nicely for all of these guys. Like T Higgins doesn't even have to bring it into his chest. He can catch it and then start waving it around like over guys and like teasing them immediately as he catches it, because it's like just not a problem to, to bring it in at all. So yeah, Burrow, Burrow was ridiculous. Herbert was ridiculous. Um, they had some snafus at the end. I mean, Burrow did miss a touchdown to Chase, and like Herbert was going to die in to throw that pick six uh, to, to Mike Hilton. So there, there are a few times where I'm like, I don't know if, uh, if whoever loses this game did kind of lose this game. You know, like that it's, is kind of why so, I felt like at the end. But so sick because if that pick six had been caught, dude, it would have been so his fault. It would yes. have been almost unbelievable, man. Um, yeah, under. But instead, we got what we got. Percentage in a pick six, it would have been rough. It would have been rough. Herbert, Herbert did not have the greatest second half, but the first half was just so good that it was so good. Yeah, Dude, it was ridiculous. I, every time I watch him throw a whole shot, I'm like, yeah, man, he's the, he's best, the best in the it. world at it. He's the best at it, man. I also like Who that he. he just, um, you go ahead. Oh, man. you go ahead. No, you, no, no, you, you, no, you go. No, you. Oh, all right. Fine. No, I was going to cut. No, it's all you, man. <laughs> I'm changing the subject terribly in an annoying way. So you go ahead and. I was just going to uh, say, like, it's fun when he reminds everybody that he has the same, like, RAS as Josh Allen. Like, he's just as big, just as fast, like, same vertical, like, explosive. He just doesn't have the same kind of recklessness when he runs. But, like, today really. Like when he takes off, like the last two weeks, he's cutting back. Like he's taken off. Like he he he, he can run, man. And yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he, he is a recklessness he is, a is, is one way to put it. Yeah, he doesn't have the fighting spirit. I would say <laughs> he does not have um, the same dog in him as Josh Allen. Like that is, no. I will say that no one has the same dog in him as Josh Allen, though. So, no. um, lad. He was shaking and baking. He really was. He exactly what we saw at Georgia. He's bringing and it to the, the NFL senior, and at the Senior Bowl. Senior like, Bowl. He is going to have a more productive rookie year than he did any season at Georgia. He's on pace for a thousand yards or over a thousand yards right now. It's incredible, man. Uh, but it's not shocking. I mean, somebody, somebody, I, I tweeted out. Somebody said, not to really hate. I don't. I didn't really get that offended. But somebody said like, "Oh well, somebody has to catch the ball on that Chargers offense." And first off, depending on the guy that you're throwing to, not necessarily. Nobody could catch <laughs> the ball for sure. But he's he is having a fantastic year. His his route running ability, his ability to get in and out of breaks, is up there with absolutely anybody. And he put up 123 this game, and he had like like a drop. He could have gone for 150. This could have easily been one of the best games from a receiver in the entire season. So I, I, I just love his game. I think he's going to be a good pro for a long time. I think it was a great get for the Chargers. I'm happy. Matt, to see was him that balling. a slight at Quinton Johnston having eight targets and two catches today? I did see that. It wasn't <laughs> a funny. slight. It may, may have been a little bit of a slight at him. <laughs> it's funny because he's he's like been kind of playing okay this year he's been getting a little better yeah the hands are still an issue but he's been getting better he's had some wins down the sideline we gotta mm -hmm. show respect a little bit but the yeah. hands are getting better it's i mean it's hard to be worse but he did he did kind of sell this game a little bit he, he didn't have his his greatest performance but no neither did herbert you know it wasn't his greatest performance but it was a spectacular first half. Like, I feel zone, like, like I the feel velocity like... that he creates to pick apart zone yeah. coverage is just so ridiculous. And his footwork is like also ridiculous. Like that guy is the closest to Tom Brady, I think, in the league when it comes to just like shifting up and sliding and throwing, like and just picking apart your zone. Like stylistically, I I see that in him and I I think the AFC playoff field is kind of set. Like when you look at the 
NFL playoff picture, the NFC is a complete mess still. Um, right. Mm hmm. But the AFC, it's like the Chiefs have a 99% chance, the Bills have a 99% chance, the Steelers have a 98% chance, the Texans have a 95% chance, the Chargers have an 89% chance, the Ravens have a 95% chance, the Broncos have a 65% chance. So that's kind of the, the thing that's still. The seven seed is up still up for battle, but like, dude, the Bengals are like the 10 seed now. You've got the Colts who are five and six, you got the Dolphins who are four and six, and like outside of that, it's. The back of the conference is bad, dude. Yeah. From a you know, there's the, Jets, Patriots, Browns, Titans, Raiders, Jags. There's five teams that the Jets are better than in just the AFC. Not mm -hmm. good. You know. <laughs> um whereas in the NFC it's it's a lot closer. You know, the the ten seed is is five and five and yeah, the, you know, a game the 49ers out or whatever. Are the, the 49ers and then the Seahawks and the Rams. I'm like, all those the Buccaneers, like all those teams, I'm like, okay, the Bears, like they're not bad either, you know. Uh, and the Saints have won a couple in a row here, even. But they have, they have the the Falcons are definitely on watch here. I didn't see much of the game. Sorry, Denver fans. I know that Bo yeah. Nix had like the greatest performance ever, or something. Um, yeah, I will we'll, say, we'll Mia Kimes kind of called this. Yeah, um, I I saw her say she was like, you know, when Bo Nix has been clean this year. He's been one of the most successful quarterbacks in football, and the Falcons' pass rush has not been exactly up to par. I would not be shocked to see Bo Nix have like the game of his career. I don't, I don't have like the word for word, but I yeah. remember seeing her say that she wouldn't be shocked if, of an outcome similar to what we saw today. Yeah, yeah, he's been good since he's been solid since week five. He hasn't been above solid i think which is something broncos fans really took offense to when i said it but i stand by it like until this game he did not rise into the upper echelon of even rookie quarterback performances so far this year like he just kind of played at i think an average level in every game before this but he had been playing solid since week five like he hadn't had any kind of fall off disaster class like caleb williams had or some of the performances that like Rattler had or some of these other rookies. But um I, you know, it's also worth noting the the car or not the Cardinals, the Falcons are so banged up at corner. Oh yes. The Falcons defense has its share of problems, but it was good to see Knicks finally have like a real like positive performance. Like the game against the Chiefs, for example, good performance, I thought. But a lot of it was just kind of taking advantage of the undefended areas underneath to the outside, right? It wasn't like into the teeth of the defense, you know, layered throw. Yeah. Like he had a few of those today that I saw on Twitter. And like, right, obviously exactly. the stat line kind of speaks for itself where it's like his, his efficiency was just so much higher. So it was good to see that game from him. And, um, mm -hmm. But I, I haven't watched the tape. Seven, I'm seeing seven guys on but, IR on this defense and one, two, three, four, five yeah, that good. were out going in to this game. And then I think one other got hurt during the game. Yes, seven I think games. it's also fair to use this game as a barometer that the Falcons defense may be ass still. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not that their numbers they're, were great going into this game, but they... they I do think it's fair to say that uh, Atlanta's defense may get them in trouble this back uh, yeah. as they try I to mean, close out this been, division win. I feel like they've been trying to survive a lot on just like Jesse Bates and Justin Simmons master classes. And I, I don't and, think uh, Justin Simmons has had a really strong season anymore. Like he yeah, got off to kind of yeah. a hot start and Bates has been continued to be good. But I think Simmons Simmons has not been uh, great and AJ Terrell hasn't been great and their pass rush is the worst in the league and it's just it's really just kind of Bates holding holding everything together, it feels like. Bates Motel, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they don't call it the Bates Grand Resort. No, they do not. No. Mm -mm. So, that's all, uh, all I've got. Yeah, I, I think guess so. that's all the games that we were going to talk about today. Wow. Who would have thought? Another end to the Stay Hot podcast. Um... 
yeah, we'll be back to we will we've been doing some film reviews. So we'll probably do another one of those coming up here soon. Have another episode talk about the upcoming week of football. You know, maybe we'll maybe we'll gamify it up a little bit, who knows. But until then, thank you all so much for tuning in. My flag football team won its first game today, so shout out. Um I think we're like one in three or one in four. It's not a, oh. not a great start. Yeah, it's been, it's been a after an undefeated summer season, the fall's been a little bit rough for us, but we got a win today. Um you know, been been playing some clamps on defense, but you know, we'll, we're going to figure out the offense. We figured it out a little bit today. And uh, next week will be perfect. But once again, thank you all so much for tuning in. And until next time, we will catch you on the Flippity Flop. Flippity Flop.